With the upcoming election, the polarizing news cycle, and the non-stop political spam texts, you may be up to your eyeballs with stress. Now, this chronic stress can really creep up on your health and well-being in unexpected ways. In this video, you learn how chronic stress causes leaky gut, brain inflammation, cravings, and autoimmune. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Kahn, board-certified chiropractic neurologist and certified in functional medicine. Let me show you how to master your health. Now, stress is a normal response to something in the environment. If it's a short-term response and your body comes back to normal, everything's fine, no harm done. However, with chronic stress, it can start to degrade your tissue. Now, where does stress come from? Well, stress comes from perception of something in your environment, some type of event. And then there's also an interpretation of that perception where you interpret it as good or bad. And if you interpret it as something stressful, then it will become stressful for you. And then that stress doesn't, it's not just something in your mind, a figment of your imagination or thoughts. It's actually going to produce what's called chronic stress physiology. Again, we're talking about chronic stress, stress that just piles on over long periods of time. And with stress, what starts with is your hypothalamus is going to release corticotropin releasing hormone. That's going to stimulate the pituitary to release adrenal corticotropin releasing hormone. And that's going to stimulate the adrenal cortex to release cortisol. Now, cortisol is your classic adrenal hormone that helps you to not just manage stress, and it, it does so by helping you to release glucose into your blood supply. So you'll have more energy to help you with fight or flight response. And also, cortisol has an effect of dampening macrophages and neutrophil. It keeps these white blood cells that triggers inflammation kind of quiet down a little bit. So you get less inflammation. So cortisol is your body's own version of cortisone, where people get cortisone shots and steroid medication. They dampen inflammation too. So this is your body's natural pharmacy. It makes this to help you dampen inflammation. Now on the other side, when you have stress, you also fire off your mesencephalon. This is an area in your brainstem where the fight or flight response originates. From the mesencephalon, you're gonna generate that fight or flight response, which means that you're gonna fire off adrenaline hormone. That adrenaline hormone is gonna have an impact on the, these immune cells in a way that it's gonna stimulate it. So here, it's going to inhibit these white blood cells that trigger inflammation while the adrenaline stimulates it. So here, you have one foot on the gas, one foot on the brake, one stimulate, one inhibit. So net effect is you break even, no harm done. But what happens is with chronic stress, you're gonna secrete a lot of cortisol. And when you have excess cortisol circulating in your system, it started to create a situation where you have cortisol resistance. Cortisol resistance is where the cortisol cannot get into your cell. It no longer works. So essentially, you're losing the break. And when you lose the break, you're gonna get these macrophage and neutrophil to be able to trigger more inflammation. And how does that trigger inflammation? Well, they do so by signaling to the nuclear factor kappa B. Nuclear factor kappa B is a protein that's secreted within your, your white blood cells primarily, but every single cell in your body can produce it. But this nuclear factor kappa B signals inflammation. It signals within your cell to say, hey, we're under attack, we need to get more inflamed. And it's gonna trigger inflammation, and that inflammation basically is macrophage and neutrophil going out there chewing up either pathogens or even tissue debris. The process of inflammation creates tissue debris, where you have dead pathogens and your tissue being chewed up, all just floating around. That tissue debris is gonna promote a TH2 dominance. T helper two immune cells are the immune cells that are responsible for helping you to clear off tissue debris. There are also the immune cells that are responsible for allergies and asthma, and so when you start to drive up this Th2 immune response, you're gonna cause the T helper one immune response, which is part of the immune cells that kill pathogens. You're gonna suppress them. And when you suppress the T helper one immune response, you're gonna have an increase in pathogen load because your immune system's not efficient, is not effective in killing off pathogen because th these guys are told to stand down, so to speak. So you're gonna get more pathogens, which then leads to your immune cells getting a little bit more crazy. They say, oh my gosh, I have all these pathogens. 
and it's gonna trigger more of the same response. So you can see this is a cycle of immune imbalance where you stimulate one side, suppress the other side, and it's gonna create this vicious cycle of more inflammation, more pathogens, and that's gonna drive T helper 17. T helper 17 are these immune cells that are responsible for producing nitric oxide, and that nitric oxide is a gas that can kill pathogens, but it can also damage your own tissue. In people with autoimmune disease, the T helper 17 is excessively stimulated, so you make too much nitric oxide gas, therefore leads to autoimmune tissue destruction. So now you see how stress can cause autoimmune flare-ups and worsening of your autoimmune disease. Now here we also see, picked up from earlier, that stress causes your mesencephalon, your midbrain, to fire off the fight or flight response. That fight or flight response is a sympathetic nervous system response. Sympathetic, sympathetic nervous system response is in opposition of the parasympathetic, which is your rest and digest system. And that rest and digest system is primarily controlled by vagus nerve. So when you have increased fight or flight response due to chronic stress, you're gonna have a decrease in vagus nerve activity. When you have decreased vagus nerve activity, secretions of stomach acid, digestive enzymes, bile from the gallbladder, and intestinal motility all decreases because vagus nerve controls secretion and motility of GI organs. When you don't have enough secretion to digest food and to detoxify and to have motility to move food through you so you can have regular bowel movements, you're gonna to start to develop gut dysbiosis. This is where you're gonna have opportunistic bacteria and candida overgrowth and then not enough good bacteria. And this gut dysbiosis is gonna promote leaky gut. By the way, leaky gut can promote more dysbi gut dysbiosis, so you have a vicious cycle here. That leaky gut is also gonna drive more inflammation because when you have gut inflammation, you're gonna have systemic inflammation so that's gonna drive inflammation, and inflammation itself can drive leaky gut. So we have another cycle here where leaky gut can cause more autoimmune tissue destruction. That leaky gut, due to the intestinal permeability, is gonna allow, allow that food protein, dietary protein that's not completely broke down yet, to leak through the leaky gut, therefore allowing your immune system to develop reaction to these food that's leaking out of the leaky gut. Therefore, you're gonna drive up your food reactions so people get multiple food sensitivity, right? If you're one of those persons where I've done a food sensitivity test and it shows I'm sensitive to everything, well, that means that you probably have leaky gut. And that food sensitivity reaction, it's gonna stimulate more T helper two immune response, kind of like a debris field, but food particles floating around, being picked up by the T helper two immune cells, drive up T helper two immune response, dampen T helper one immune response, which kills path pathogens. So it's gonna limit your ability to kill pathogen, and away we go. You can see the rest of the story there, that it all leads to inflammation and autoimmunity. All from stress. Now, here's another thing. T helper two immune response can actually lead to mast cell to degranulate and release histamine. Mast cell is a, ty is a t type of Th2 immune cell. So when you have increased T helper 2 response, your mast cells are gonna release its mediators, such as histamine, more readily. So now you're gonna have high histamine. Now the problem is that high histamine is gonna drive more fight or flight response. Your mesencephalon, your brain is sensitive to this histamine molecule, and histamine is gonna drive more fight or flight and more stress. In addition, the high histamine is also gonna drive neuroinflammation. It's gonna cause your brain to be inflamed. And when your brain's inflamed, you're gonna get brain fog, you're gonna get short-term memory loss, you're gonna get depression. So you get depression in order for you, you wanna feel better, so you get cravings. A lot of people emotionally eat. They eat emotionally, use food as a drug to make them feel better. So what do you crave? Typically, you crave high histamine foods. What are those high histamine foods? Chocolate, wine, and cheese. So you consume the high histamine foods, which drives up more adrenaline because histamine drives fight or flight, and that flight or flight response increases histamine or increases adrenaline. So 
High histamine drives sympathetic nervous system activity, which drives more adrenaline. So you get more adrenaline rush from eating the high histamine food, which makes you feel energized because adrenaline is a hormone that releases glucose into your system. It gives you more energy. This is why people drink caffeine. It's a stimulant that stimulates adrenals. So histamine can do that too. So now you get energized, so you associate feeling better with eating these histamine foods like chocolate and junk food. And then so then that creates more cravings. So now people will say, oh, I have a weak willpower. No, you don't. You have a chemical imbalance that's driven by stress that drives these inflammatory pathways and that literally causes an immune system imbalance that drives up histamine and that histamine is driving this neurological issue. So this is how stress can cause leaky gut, brain inflammation, and depression, and cravings, and lead to autoimmune tissue destruction and flare-ups. I hope this helps you understand how stress impacts your entire body. Please let me know in the comments what's the one thing that you learned that was new to you. Now, if you found value in this video, please give this video a thumbs up and consider sharing it with those who need to hear this message. Please subscribe to my channel to get more tips to master your health. I really appreciate your support. God bless and see you in the next video.